Hi, I'm Dan Herbert, course developer and instructor at Point Blank, and this tutorial video gives you a flavour of what you can expect on our online courses. If you want to develop your music production skills further, head to www.pointblankmusicschool.com to find out more about this course plus many more that we offer in London, Los Angeles, Ibiza and online. In this video we're going to take a look at Arturia's Moog Modular V3 and in a later video we'll explain how to recreate the synth sounds you can hear underneath. So the Moog Modular is a fully modular synth and unlike the ARP 2600 which we covered in an earlier video, if you don't patch anything in you won't actually get any sound out. When you first open the plugin you might find it slightly overwhelming, there's lots of controls and jack inputs but it's actually laid out in quite a logical way and many of the modules are simply replicated. So we can see here the filter section, range of envelopes, the oscillator section, I've got two main VCAs here. Down here along this bar we've got a mixer section, if I scroll down then you can see here is the sequencer, we've then got three effects, a fixed filter bank, dual delay and a chorus or a phaser and then we've got the keyboard controls down here as well as some global settings such as polyphony and unison modes. If I go back up, now the thing which makes this synth so deep is actually we can change some of these modules, so if I click on where it says low pass we can choose different filter types. Equally, if we click on the label up here, we can choose different modules as well. Or if I come over to envelopes, there's some additional modules like envelope followers and sample and hold. So there's more to this synth than first appearances. You can switch the screen size by just coming up, clicking on this icon, coming down to resize window, and then we can choose a different setting here. It'd be nice if there's some shortcuts available for these and we also find some internal connections as well so if you notice here it says k1 uh, it's related to key tracking we've also got the ability to choose different sequencer channels and if i right click here we can also specify different trigger sources so the great thing about software instruments in comparison to the hardware version is you can store and recall patches instantly and you can easily hear the potential by browsing through all the different presets or alternatively you can use the template bank as a starting point to get you up and running. However the best way to learn about modular synthesis is to spend some time focusing on individual modules and really get to know their parameters. So let's hook up an oscillators. If I come down to the oscillator section here, I'm going to connect something like a sawtooth wave. Okay, You'll notice that all the available inputs have now gone red. I'm going to connect it into the VCA in here. And now if I play the keyboard, we've now got sound. So in the oscillator section, you've actually got nine oscillators, which are in groups of three. Okay, And each of those groups has what's known as a driver. So this kind of offers global controls like pitch and pulse width over these three oscillators and then you've got another section here a driver and then these three oscillators each of the oscillators actually outputs four different waveforms sine triangle saw and a pulse so if you do the math that's actually 36 oscillators you also have up in this top right hand corner uh, a white and pink noise generator as well if I want to mix several of these different waveforms together, then we can make use of this flexible mixer section down here. So let's start by calling up the blank synth patch. That just resets everything. And let's drag a sawtooth and connect up to the input here. And on this one, should we go for a square wave into there? And we'll choose a sine wave into here. So to mix all three together I click on this link button and the next and this routes them all to the first output but here. We've got individual volume controls for each of those and I'm going to connect the output and drag it up and connect into the filter and then from the out of the filter to hear that we need to come down here to the VCA in. There we go. So now if I play a note we hear a low sound comprised of three oscillators, which is filtered. Let's just open up the filter to start with. Brilliant. So if we want to change the pitch of these filters, we can change the pitch of them all at the same time, obviously playing the keyboard, but adjusting the driver pitch there, or individually we can change their settings. If you double click on a parameter it sets it uh, normally to its default value. So there's two controls of the pitch, an octave range, so I could put that up and let's pull this one down. Mm -hmm. 
and also we can adjust semitones and it's useful when setting these just to look in the bottom left hand corner because you can see precisely where you're setting your parameters you can also hold down the shift key and click and drag and that gives you fine control over the tuning of the oscillator the driver also has a control for the pulse width going from a thin pulse to a square and interestingly this also affects the shape of the sawtooth and triangle you can also see some input jacks here which enable modulation of both the pulse width and oscillator frequency so let's say I want to modulate the filter using an envelope all we do is come to a spare envelope click on the output again you'll notice that any available jack is highlighted red and then we connect into the mod in to adjust the modulation amount you click on the outer ring here and you can drag up for a positive modulation or down to invert that so if I play a note now just need to adjust the cutoff let's increase the modulation amount okay you can hear the envelope affecting the cutoff okay we can also increase the resonance here and as we saw before we can just click on the filter type and let's invert that there we go right switch it back to the low pass cool so we could also make use of the LFOs we have two LFOs here one positioned up near the filter section and one down here next to the oscillators but you can obviously route them to wherever you want so if I wanted to modulate the filter cutoff then let's just go from the triangle wave into another modulation input I hold a note down so the actual rate of an LFO can be synced to your host DAW when it says MIDI or if you look down the bottom left we can see that's measured in Hertz okay so it's up to you which you choose and where it says tempo times a value this is in terms of a quarter note beat and another great thing about uh, the software is how easy it is to split cables so if I wanted to let's say modulate the amplitude I could just come from the triangle wave connect into the amplitude modulation input turn that up and now we're getting a kind of tremolo sound as well to reset I can just double click there and then we can add some effects as well if I come down so here we've got the fixed filter bank if I want to add a bit of delay switch on VCA1 and again you can see the delay we can actually sync the times to the host DAW and also add chorus either to VCA1 or VCA2 so hopefully this video gives you an overview of the Arturias Moog modular and you can see that it's actually quite easy to patch different modules together to create sounds in the following video we'll look at using the sequencer and create some of the sounds you heard at the beginning of this video